gonna do now is is replace this uh, disconnect. Um, I had, like I said, this Square D 30 amp breaker has a disconnect between uh, all my uh, my breaker panel downstairs and my inverter, uh, which I found out obviously was not gonna protect my system properly. So I had to buy a new box because this new Outback breaker cannot mount in that box, in that Square D box. So, where'd it go? I have this new box, it's called the Outback Baby Box. And uh, I've already mounted some CarFlex connectors on each end. And basically the idea here is this is going to, the breaker mounts right in here like so. Right on the din there. Okay. And I've put in a little ground bus bar because it's going to sit like this. It's going to be right here. And this is, uh, this is coming out from the inverter. This is the, uh, this is the line. This is going down to the breaker panel inside. That's the load. So uh, let me show you how to wire that up now. Okay, so first thing you do is just screw it into the wall. Uh, this is CarFlex, and it is uh, like a conduit, a, like a liquid tight conduit for uh, for wires. And this is a, a CarFlex. Uh, uh, connector here. So the way this works is this little lock ring screws on the inside locking the connector on to the box and you slide this uh, I guess it's called a lock nut or something over the car flex there and you run your wires in and then the the conduit here goes over this inner ring and inside of this outer these outer little lock little lock ring like that and then when you screw this on it tightens these little teeth down and holds it in place and there's that that thing is a solid watertight connection the other side of this connection has a gasket on the outside so no water can get in and now our wires are inside the box. I bought a little ground bus bar for the grounds to connect on. It's gonna connect the ground, grounds this thing before I screw it in because it's pretty tight in there. Might not be able to get these things in easy once it's in, mounted in the box. Just get those relatively tight for now. Okay, that's that guy. Okay, then these out of the way for a minute. Now I'll run in from the inverter side. Got a connector there. Let's see here. Bus bar mounts there. So can we just make a turn with this? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So I'm mounting the now I'm mounting the ground coming from the inverter from the line side to the bus bar. Just tight enough for now to hold it in place. And now I will mount the ground bus bar to the box. That's the thing about electricity, man. Wires and it's always a pain in the ass. Always. It's always like, it's always like, oh God, this won't fit. Oh, it's too tight. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it never fails. <coughs> All right. I guess I'm going to shorten this up. Make this really short. So I'm connecting the hot. Right now I'm connecting the inverter hot positive to the to the uh, 
line side of the breaker. Now, now I'm connecting the load side of positive down to the AC breaker box. Okay. Breaker is locked in. So now the AC neutral, two of those guys, they just get wire netted together. Smush them together a little bit. You get one of these big ass wire nuts. And then you try to make this all fit in this box because this is a very small box. I think that'll fit. Oh yeah, man, that would be fucking awesome. Okay. Perfect. All right, so now our uh, our disconnect is installed and I'm gonna turn the inverter on. Wait for that to load up. <coughs> All right, so now the inverter's on and uh, turn the breaker on and now there should be power in the house okay so I just installed two more panels on the on the front face here uh, they're a string of two in series and now I'm running the wires from the panels positive and negative into the combiner box to my third uh, DC breaker here so I have a hole punched out right here a half inch hole and now I'm gonna put in a little uh, conduit jammy to protect the cables from the edges of the hole. Uh, you know what, Nick? What? I'm gonna give you a little, uh, little bushing screwed onto the top of this guy right here to not even sure what it's for it's just required by code honestly it doesn't really do much of anything and then we'll connect the connect the negative PV negative to the PV negative bus bar connect the PV positive to the line side, the bottom of the DC breaker here. Now notice that there's blue tape on the negative and positive. That's because this is designated as the blue string of panels. This lets me know uh, which wires go to which string of panels, which pair of panels on the roof. So I got a blue string, I got a red string, and I got a yellow string. What's blue, yellow, and red stand for again? They just it just designates which set of panels they go to, so I know which is which. Connecting two more panels to my system is because uh, I got a really good deal. I have uh, shot 225 watt panels and shot went out of business. Uh, their solar division went out of business a couple years ago. So I was able to get actually three panels for $200 each. That's less than a dollar per watt. And I couldn't really pass up the opportunity. So 
I don't really need the power, but um, I got such a great deal that I have them, so I'm gonna put them up. Now that third panel I can't use yet because um, with seven panels, all I can have is my, uh, there's a couple different ways to wire it, but the way I have it is uh, three strings of two. Um, and that leaves the seventh one not being able to connect it to anything. If I was to connect it to another breaker here, um, since, the, uh, since the voltage would be half of what's coming in from the other panels, the wattage would be half as well, um, it, the, actually that would bring, my charge controller would not be able to distinguish between them and it would actually bring them all down to 50% capacity. It would be like, it'd be like three strings of one. Uh, so I can't set it up. I have to, if I want to use that other panel, I have to buy yet another one and have eight and have four strings of two, which would be crazy. But if I can get another good deal, I'll do it. Um, okay. So now to turn it on first, I'll turn on my turn on my uh, PV breakers, my combiner box, and then I'll turn on my charge controller. And I'll just turn everything on, honestly. And there you go. All right. Um, so let's just go down there. Oh, that's the other thing too. Can you get down a little bit? I need to show you something up in here. Okay, so the other thing that I did was install this comb. Uh, before I had all of my, uh, I had a, a separate wire for each of my uh, PV strings coming out of the load side of these breakers going into the load center and they were just triple lugged together, um, which is not good. That's not the way to go about it. Um, so I, I got this comb and basically what that does, it combines all the breakers into, in, to one lug into one wire right there that runs down into the load center. So I don't have to double or triple lug anything. Um, and uh, so this is the right way to do it. Uh, so when there's like a short or when there's like a surge of amperage going through this thing, it will take three to 10 seconds for this thing to, to trip at three times its max amperage. So if this is up to six...